Hello everyone, this is Troy Kostasik for Explorminate.com. I'm here with another Let's Try series. This time I'm doing Predestination, which is a Space 4X. Um, this is a game that is still in Alpha. As you can see from the upper left hand corner, it's version 0.8.5.9. Uh, Micah, a colleague of mine at Explorminate, did a couple episodes uh, a few months back, but that was version excuse me, uh, 0.8.1.8. So this is uh, a good number of versions later. A number of new things have been implemented in the game since Micah did his episode. And so, uh, you know, the, those of us on staff were talking about this. Uh, this game and doing another uh, series on it and um, it, you know what a lot of our community members in the forums really started talking about this game uh, not too long ago we did uh, an article that previewed all the games that are gonna come out uh, in our genre uh, in 2015 2016 what we call the Explorminate fiscal year which runs from September 1st through August 31st and um, Predestination was on there and it sparked a lot of conversation and so we could tell there was a lot of interest in our community for this game and so here we are we're going to do this series on it and see how far we can get uh, the game currently has a number of options that can't be chosen like story mode challenge maps multiplayer modding even options I can't click on that just yet um, the control volume or or something like that so if the music's a little loud right now I apologize I will uh, fix that as soon as we get in game uh, the tutorial for the game does work and I recommend if you if you do buy this game in early access that you go ahead and play through the tutorials they're good they're informative uh, they'll really help improve your experience uh, the game has a quick load option here it will load your last save unfortunately here on the uh, front page of the game you can't load an older save uh, I've played about five or six games of predestination now um, and you know I can't load any of them from this front page I can only load my last one so that that is a bit of a pain but I'm sure the devs will put in a, a different load button as the game moves on into beta uh, it has a couple buttons here for giving feedback and reporting a bug that'll take you to their steam forums so anyway we're gonna start a new game alright now there's been a recent patch in this game and so there may be some problems normally when I come to this screen this uh, little hex map here that you see on the left is populated by stars and and nebulae and all kinds of other different s celestial objects right now it's totally blank so when they implemented the new version they forgot to implement a few of the graphics which is too bad it's actually kinda pretty I'm sorry you're not gonna get a, a chance to see it normally I play on medium maps but for the purposes of this uh, let's try I'm gonna do a small map uh, age you can have new galaxies average galaxies or old galaxies or even ancient galaxies I'm gonna go with average. I don't like new, I'm sorry, I don't like new or young or even primordial. I like, I like average the best. I'm gonna go with oxygen as the gas. I don't know what difference that makes. I have no clue. Uh, uh, but, you know, I know that I breathe oxygen, so I'm gonna choose that. Uh, difficulty, they have a few different options here. Um, I'm going to stick with easy for now. Enemy races, I'm just going to have one. That way we're both fairly powerful whenever we meet up. Uh, then they give you an option here for tech level, your starting tech level. Pre-warp is the base level. And, you know, you can start with, you know, in the space exploration tech tree level. I'm going to start with pre-warp because I think it provides the better storyline for the game. And... Um, Predestination is a bit more of a story-oriented 4X RPG. I'll, I'll explain that more 
uh, once we get in the game. So I'm going to start with the pre-warp. They give you the option to have a 3D or 2D map. I like the 3D map. It's a bit more immersive for me. Wormholes are a new option. I have not played with them yet. I can turn them off, but I'm going to leave them on because I don't know what they do and I'd like to find out. So we're going to leave those on and find out what they do. Alright, let's move on. Okay, next we have the different factions that you can play. And um, I, would, I would say that these are pretty typical for a Space 4X. You've got the Renegades and you've got like the ultra law and order faction and you know we can presume that they are the same species it's just that you know the ultra law and order faction is trying to maintain a, a sense of civilization and, and control while the renegades are living the dystopian dream of uh, you know fighting for whatever cause they believe in and um, you know sticking it to the man here uh, you know if you've played other games like Sins of the Solar Empire Rebellion or even like uh, terrestrial uh, sci-fi games like uh, Civ Beyond Earth you kind of get the idea here the dichotomy um, we also have a Soros faction here that's a, a reptilian faction um, reptilian factions go pretty far back to uh, you know the the early days master of magic for instance uh, had the draconians um, uh, if you played you know any of those games master of magic age of wonders 3 uh, worlds of magic you, you kind of know what these guys are about um, the Starforged are the uh, cyborg robotic race. Um, if I had to guess, they probably don't need food. Uh, they're, they're mechanical race of beings. The Kazir are cat people. Uh, Predestination is based on Master of Orion 2, or at least inspired by it, and, you know, Master of Orion 2 came out in the 90s. In the 90s, having some kind of cat species uh, was just all the rage, and so Predestination is tipping their hat to that tradition. And then you have the Zlock. Zlock are an aquatic race. Uh, I really like the animation they have here for it. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, having an aquatic race would be tremendously convenient for a spacefaring game because you have to transport all that water in addition to food and supplies. Uh, unfortunately, none of the racial bonuses or technologies or anything that would make any of these factions different from one another are implemented in the game yet. They're just, at this point, color their their flavor you know there's there's no real difference I'm gonna choose the Soros um, I believe if I if I remember correctly they're supposed to have some kind of bonus to production of food once those things get uh, implemented in the game but uh, yeah I'm gonna choose to be them this time and that's about it as far as like options for starting a game there there's really not a whole lot of options for customizing a game yet so it's gonna generate the map for us and that'll take it a little while um, predestination uh, is a game where where you're kinda playing out a story like I mentioned earlier the the story goes that you were on a spaceship and you got swallowed by a, a wormhole or some other space anom anomaly and it sent you hurtling back through time and your spaceship crash landed on a planet this planet and your job as the leader of your faction is to return your people to the stars and fix your spaceship which you can see right here your damaged science vessel and get that thing flying again get it out of the atmosphere and begin exploring the galaxy looking for a way to get back to where you were in order to do that you have to build up your civilization. 
you start with a city which is right here and all these buildings and things are just placeholders so don't judge the game by its graphics just yet you begin with a research lab and a food processor you also have a number of other buildings in your city like metal silos, food silos, energy batteries and then your main humanoid city here which is basically housing for your people uh... you can build new buildings on these hexes that's as big as your city can get it's just what you see here on these hexes so all right. now your first order of business is to uh... make this planet habitable for your people to do that you need three resources you're gonna need energy food and metal those are the three resources in predestination alright the most critical one you need to start with is power okay energy we're starting it with no technology you've got no technologies researched so the first thing you have gotta build is a fossil fuel plant okay so you start with fossil fuel, you build that here on this little coal icon, and that will supply your city with electricity. Fossil fuel plants are cheap, but they're also very dirty. They pollute, and that makes your people unhappy. Uh, I'll show you how we track happiness here in just a moment. Now that you've got electricity, you need to feed your people, so you're going to build a farm. And I can build a farm anywhere you see this... this uh, little cluster of hexes that are moving around turns green. Anywhere it's green I can build a farm and it'll produce food. But ideally you will build your farm on something that has food icons. You can see them here. They look like ears of corn. So I'm going to put my farm right there. Like that. And you can see it automatically connects my city to my farm with a road. There. So I got a road going to my power plant I got a road going to the farm. I got a road going to my broken down spaceship. Okay, I've got food. I've got energy. Now I need metal. And to get metal, I need an ore refinery. Again, I can place this anywhere. It turns green. Okay, and it'll produce ore. It'll produce metal. No matter where I put it, as long as it's green. But uh, ideally, I'll put it where there's these ore icons and that'll make my ore refinery more efficient I'll produce more metal so we're just gonna do that real quick okay now I also begin with a, a, a scout ship now, this is a terrestrial scout ship can't go into outer space it's right here it's this hex little hex icon right there and what that will do is it'll explore the planet and remove this fog of war that you see covering the whole planet here. I've only got a little bit revealed. So he will follow around the exterior of my uh, of my little uh, empire zone right here, slowly revealing the fog of war. I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. We're going to choose research. Uh, you'll probably recognize this research tree from other other games I mean it's not exactly the same but it's mainly the same idea it's got branches and if you choose one branch you're automatically closing yourself off from the others means if I choose scout transceiver I can't get scout speed or scout remote control I I get this and then I gotta go on to resource sensors um, that doesn't mean I can't ever get these technologies I chose not to I can trade for them through dis diplomacy later on in the game but for now if I choose transceiver I can't choose speed or remote control so I'm gonna choose my first one normally I choose scout speed which helps me reveal the planet which is really important because I don't want to waste much time on this first planet uh, the transceiver um, would let me have two drones but two drones cost me money cost me energy cost me metal I don't have a lot of that here at the beginning of the game so really one's gonna be good enough if I speed it up so I'm gonna choose scout, scout speed alright let's look at some of the other uh, bits of information here um, 
much like uh, the all the let's plays I do what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda give you an overview of the game I'll play a single turn and that'll be it for this first episode and then the following episodes will really get into playing we'll dive into that first thing I'm gonna look at here is population okay right now on the city or on this planet in the city I have 2,000 citizens and I've got 2,000 houses okay I'm at max capacity later on if I want to I can I can build more housing in the city once I research how to do that okay which means my population can grow if my population grows it means I can build more farms and more ore refineries properly staff them and increase the collection of resources so this chart will show me how I'm doing on my citizens how how they're reproducing how they're being housed that sort of thing this is my uh, food statistics um, on the right you can see how much is being produced and how much is being used okay I'm producing 2703 tons of food per turn no is it per turn yeah I guess it is per turn and I'm consuming 2,000 tons of food per turn so each uh, each person each citizen consumes about one ton of food per turn <laughs> that's a lot of food anyway that's how it works I've got a surplus of 703 tons okay now this surplus will eventually feed over here onto the left side of the graph uh, I've got 13,500 tons stored I've got a capacity for 17,500 tons if I start producing more surplus than I have storage like if I fill up all my storage it just gets wasted they throw out the extra food so you want to build food silos in your uh, capital to kind of store that food in case something should happen and uh, you're you're getting low on food energy kind of works the same way I'm producing 50 I'm using 34 I got 16 surplus I believe GJ stands for gigajoules and I've got a storage capacity of 200 and I've got 172 energy stored. Energy can be a little tricky. Um, of all the resources, I think energy is the one that is the one you're most likely to run out of in the early game because these uh, fossil fuel plants don't last very long. Uh, later on in the game, um, energy can be converted into space dollars I'll explain the currency here in just a moment uh, and so it becomes a very important resource then you actually want lots of it a huge surplus metal is the third uh, resource here that you can get from your city you can see I've used zero tons I've produced 19 that means I got 19 surplus uh, I've got 1100 tons of storage space and 640 tons stored um, in the early game you're really not gonna run out of metal but as the game goes on and you start building more and more ships and more and more cities on more and more planets like it's it's very easy to run out of metal um, so build those metal silos store it up build lots of ore refineries, build lots of factories so that way you don't run out when you gotta build new colony ships, new uh, warships, new scouts, that sort of thing. Okay, this last icon uh, gives me some statistics on my colony. Security is at 100%, that means it's a safe place to live. Health is at 90%, Okay, I've lost 10% because I built this uh, fossil fuel po power plant. Uh, morale is at 100%. Most people are happy. And loyalty is at 100%. You know, there's not a lot of unrest. Now, this icon is yellow because I'm not at 100% on my health. And I look down here and it gives me a warning. 
Diseases detected. Hospitals are over capacity. The reason they are over capacity is there are no hospitals. I haven't researched that yet. When I research a hospital, this yellow icon is going to turn green because my people will be happy again. Alright. Uh, just a couple other things. Uh, this is where your cities list will appear for a planet. Uh, this planet can have up to four cities built on it. Um, I don't have, well, I only have one planet at the moment. This will give me some basic statistics on that. I'm producing eight byte coins a turn. Byte coins is a cryptocurrency in this game. I kind of like the uh, the pop culture reference there to bitcoins if you're familiar with those things. So in predestination, you use byte coins instead of space bucks or whatever other games they'll call it. I'm producing 14 research a turn. I have no morale bonus because my people are sick from the fossil fuel plant. Um, here's what I can build, the farm, power plant, ore refinery, services, this is uh, the scouts that I have available, only one. Okay, let's look up here real quick. This is my treasury. Uh, empire tax rate right now is at 0%, which is fine, I don't need to raise taxes. If I do raise taxes, I'm going to get a hit to my morale. And as you can see, raising taxes here only gets me one extra Bitcoin turn. So, not worth it to me. Um, let's see, what else have we got here? We've got command points. That's for my shipping fleet. I don't have any spaceships yet, so it's at zero. And the year is just keeping track of turns, keeping track of time. Um, this icon right here tells me, the upper right hand icon tells me, uh, that's interesting, the tooltip says scout speed, but that's actually the number of turns it's going to take for me to research my next technology, 18 turns. So the tooltip says scout drones are outfitted with augmented, oh, okay, that's the, sorry. That's the description of the technology I am researching. So the, I guess it does make sense after all. Okay, so that's what all that means. Down here is the next turn button. You know the research tab. There are five different types of research. Physics, construction, biology and geology, sociology, and synergies. Don't know what synergy is just yet. They haven't implemented it. Uh, this planet's not quite implemented yet but eventually I should be able to manage all my uh, interstellar problems from this panel uh, diplomacy when I meet that other faction um, this is where I'll interact with them when I get a space fleet this is where I'll be able to uh, you know build them and uh, manage my fleet from here and then of course we have the menu button right there um, so let's see is there anything else I need to explain here I don't think so um, this planet is mostly water it looks like which is unfortunate you want mostly land well there's another continent over here pretty big continent okay good um, land is is preferable because you gotta get that ore, you gotta get that food. There are technologies that will let you extract ore and food from water tiles. You just have to research them. Um, bringing, uh, right clicking on this will uh, bring up a little menu here. Clicking on the uh, environmental sensors will kinda give you a better look at the planet. It removes the fog of war in as much as it will show you what land types are on the planet. Uh, this red stuff is kind of arid, the green stuff is fertile. You can see that there are mountains, that sort of thing. Now that doesn't reveal what resources are around. Okay, that can only be revealed by the scout. So um, that is kind of nice to actually just get a better view of the planet. and. It can matter like when you're wanting to build uh, like a solar power plant or something, you know. 
uh, the different land types are, are better for certain buildings than other buildings so being able to check this out uh, is a nice little option and then if you just want to go back so you can see what you've explored and what you haven't you just choose uh, the standard map view um, there's also the resource sensors which I can't choose yet because I haven't research, researched that technology there's also the uh, wind and wave sensors uh, which you know uh, highlights area of high wind and in white and high wave activity in blue wind and wave power plants generate double energy in these areas I don't have the option to pick that yet so that's about it let's play one turn so you can see how the scout moves around and that sort of thing all right not that impressive um what the game does give you though is the option to auto end turn until something happens so now when I click end turn the game's just gonna clip along until I get a random event I get acid rain uh, the particular emissions from the fossil fuel power plants on Soros which I guess is named after my people with excuse me no atmospheric filters have led to a huge acid rain cloud that is starting to kill your crops. Yay! How would you like to deal with the situation? I can redesign the farms. Spend eight turns of research to redesign all current and future farms with enclosed growing areas and underground irrigation systems. This will ensure that this problem never happens again, but delays my technology for eight turns. I can replant the farms. I can spend 250 credits to replant my farms and ensure the food supply is uninterrupted for now uh... but you know that cost me all my money and is not a permanent solution or i could just ignore it you know the acid rain cloud uh... will wipe out all my crops all farms will be offline for three turns and the cloud will ruin several fertile soil deposits uh... it's pretty obvious that this is the best option so we're just going to choose that one add eight turns and you know that's just gonna be the way it is alright so now it goes back to researching my technology after eight turns and it stops the game when my technology is researched and you see this little warning square here on the left hand side of the screen I click on that it tells me hey my scout drones are outfitted with augmented engines allows them to, allowing them to move three times their normal uh, speed and it prompts me to choose another technology to research so we're going to do that real quick I'm going to choose the hospital get my people healthy and happy so there's that uh, my metal is all full okay I've stored as much as I can but I don't want to waste all that so I'm going to go to my city real quick I'm going to go to buildings choose metal silo build another metal silo right here it'll store up to another 250 tons of metal that's a lot of metal so now that will take I think it's four turns to build it will four turns to build so in four turns I'll have a new metal silo I'll be able to store this surplus metal that I'm not using um, that's about all I really need to take care of at the moment so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this episode right here um, I really want to thank you for joining me on this uh, I look forward to doing uh, a good long series on predestination here so uh, come back see episode 2 when I get it up and I'll talk to you guys next time this is Troy Kostasik for exploreminate.com it's been good having you <laughs>